Usually, when pestilence or famine or other things happen to people, according to the Old Testament, it's due to the people's disobedience. And here, God is expressing the fact that prayer can turn around God's judgments upon a land. God can turn, uh, prayer can turn God's judgments around on your life. Prayer can turn things around that, that, um, uh, are not, that are not good situations, not favorable to you. And so without the ability to pray and to pray in line with God's word, you're not going to be successful as a Christian. I often come across people who, who don't pray very much. I often come across people who wonder why they're in trouble. And I want to talk to them, and I ask them, you know, how much do you read your Bible? And sometimes they tell me two minutes or five minutes, or how much do you pray in two minutes to five minutes? Well, if I could pray two minutes a day and read my Bible for two minutes a day and be in vict- and have victory, well, that would be wonderful, but I can't do that. And we were talking about our sister Sharon. Um, we have all prayed for her. Uh, not only the nine months that she's been in the difficulty with the surgery, but we've been praying before that as well. But it's taken a long time for her to get uh, to where she was able to come this morning on her own. And I think that's wonderful, but sometimes you have to just keep on praying. You don't just pray one time or one day or one week or one month. You have to keep going with the program until you get the victory. Amen. And so God is speaking to Solomon here, and now he has a beautiful house, and and the temple was so magnificent. I'm not going to go over it, but everything in it was just glorious. It was gold and jewels and a just fabulous place, amen, and I'm sure his house was the same. The problem that Solomon had later on in his life uh, is he got involved with a lot of women, and he quit praying. He quit reading his Bible. He quit reading the old, the uh, would be the, the old covenant, amen. But he quit doing what he needed to do to make himself successful. And here God is speaking to him. And had he done these things here, he would have not gotten into all the difficulties that he did if he would have continued to pray. And uh, I, I face it all the time with people when I'm talking to people. I don't like to see people get into trouble. But one of the things uh, people have said to me, and many people have said it to me, I quit praying. I quit praying and I got into trouble. I quit doing the things I know to do. I quit praying. I quit reading my Bible, etc. And trouble came. And I know that in the last days, I share this morning, the Bible says perilous times shall come because men will be lovers of their own selves, disobedient, proud, blasphemers, all kinds of stuff that they do. All you have to do is turn your TV on and, and you can see all kinds of garbage that's on there. Amen. So we, don't, we know we're living in the last days, but how is our prayer life? I like the song that Marty sang. That prayer is significant in our lives. That prayer makes a difference. And sometimes if we just wouldn't quit praying, like we've seen today with our sister Sharon, that it brings results. If we just stick with the program, if we just keep at it day in and day out and day in and day out, then eventually we're going to get the victory. Amen. This scripture is, is telling us that when we see the difficulties arise in our life, if we will humble ourselves and pray, then God will hear from heaven. He's talking about in his church, but we are the church now. The Spirit of God lives within us, so we can pray at home. We can pray in our house. We can pray in our car. We can pray wherever, and God is going to hear us. Amen. But we ought to pray in the church. Hello, amen. When Jesus was alive and walking the earth and he went into the house of God and all they were doing is going after money and money changing and selling lame animals and doing a bunch of crazy stuff, he got angry and he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, amen. 
This is a house of prayer. We should be praying when we come in here. We should be worshiping when we come in here. This is where we get to hold a God. Amen. We need to have communication with God. We need to be able to, the, to pour our hearts out before the Lord. And if we certainly we can't do it in church, where are we going to do it? I know we can do it at home, but most people don't do it there. Amen. Most people, if they're going to pray, they pray in church. Amen. We need to discipline ourselves to where we do both, though. We pray here, and we pray at home, or we pray in our car, or we pray wherever we are. Amen. It will make a difference, and God's blessing will be upon us. Amen. Uh, I, I don't think there's a person in here that at various times in your life um, uh, that, that you do not run into some kind of difficult problem. From time to time in your life, you face difficult situations. It's not every day and it's not all the time, but you will face it. The Bible tells us in the last days we're going to face perilous times. And that means that it's going to get worse and we need to learn how to pray, and how to get the blessing on our lives. Amen. God will provide for us if we will pray. Amen. God will do something for us. Amen. I love this story of the missionary we had in our church many years ago. Um, during the Depression years, uh, they had gas rationing and difficulties, and it was very difficult for a lot of people. And she was saying that she had to drive across town one day, and uh, they didn't have much food or money. And when she was following this truck, it was a cabbage truck. And every time the cabbage truck hit a bump, it would knock a head of cabbage off the truck. Amen. And so she followed the, the truck across town, and when she, she came back home, she had a whole back seat full of cabbage. Amen. And so they had something to eat for dinner. Amen. Cabbage tastes good if you got nothing else. Can I get a witness? Amen. It'll taste really good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It'll taste good. So we find that 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 I, I'm 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 constantly trying to focus on on what God wants for me. I'm trying to focus on how do I get from where I am to where I need to be. And so God is wanting me to learn how to stand firm in difficult times and continue to pray as we have in the past until the answer comes. When we continue to pray, then God is going to bring provision. I see people, and I've heard it so many times, they say, Pastor, I prayed for five minutes and I didn't get anything. Amen. I prayed for one solid hour and I didn't get anything. Amen. Amen. Well, I wish I could get in an hour or five minutes or 15 minutes. Amen. But it's not, that's not what we do. It's, what, it's just part of our life. But we must pray in order to gain victory. Amen. And in this, in this passage of Scripture, we are only seeing a little part of Solomon's life. But I watch people that when they were young Christians... They would not even think about doing certain things. They got away from sin and they quit doing it. But later on in their life, they drew back from their prayer life and their Bible study. And then they started doing the things that they used to do before they got saved. And pretty soon they weren't in church anymore. And they were backslid and they were doing the things. Amen. And uh, we know the story. Uh, the Bible says, Amen. If you're not careful that the spirit that was in there, he'll bring seven other spirits, amen, with him, and you'll be seven times worse than you ever were before. I don't know about you, but I don't want to know what seven times worse was than what I was at, amen. I don't want to do that one again, amen. 